Hello and welcome to this Dexco video tutorial. From Kingston I got this very nice uh, memory kit, this is one of the modules. And as you can see there's already a pretty impressive blue heat spreader installed here. What I'm going to do in today's video is I'm going to be installing water cooling modules on these memory sticks. And here's one of these water cooling modules, it's made by Phobia. And as you can see it has a, an air cooling component as well as these uh, water cooling fittings. This is what I'm going to be installing. Now it doesn't really matter what kind of memory you're using or whether you want to install water cooling modules or just different air cooling heat sinks. Uh, the main thing I'm going to be looking at in this tutorial is how to remove this original heat sink. That's the most, most crucial part and that's what we're going to have a look at right now. Before we move on, as always, please keep in mind that removing the original heat sinks of your hardware voids your warranty. Now, these heat sinks are always either stuck together with glue or they're screwed together, fastened together with screws. So the first thing you should do is check if um, there are any screws that you can remove. And since this isn't the case on these kits here, um, we know that they're stuck together with adhesive and we have to pry them open. For tools, all you really need is a small, fine, precision screwdriver. What I do is I stick the screwdriver into the small gap between the two halves of the heat spreader and carefully pry them apart. Do this to both ends of the heat spreader and you should see it separating fairly quickly. Just make sure never to use too much force doing this. Now, the thing here is that this is single-sided RAM, so the chips are only on one side of the PCB. And the bad news about this is that on the other side it's stuck on with really strong adhesive. To make prying off the heatsink from the PCB a bit easier, I'm going to be using this to heat it up. That will make it a lot easier to remove. You can also pop it in the oven at low temperatures, please. Don't fry your memory, uh, but just do something to heat it up a little bit and that will make it a lot easier to remove. Now that it's warmed up I go about removing that second half of the heatsink. If you're lucky this will be really easy and you can just take it off by hand. In my case as I said it's glued on really strongly and I'm using the screwdriver again to carefully insert in between the PCB and the heatsink and carefully pry it open. And I'm deliberately overemphasizing the word carefully here. Seriously, it doesn't take much to damage one of these memory modules, so be really, really careful and really patient. The key is to do this in small steps. Insert a screwdriver, pry it open a little bit, then move on by half an inch, insert it again, pry it open a little bit, move on again, and so on. After I've made some progress with this, I can start using my hands, which is better for applying even pressure. As you can see here, I'm slowly pulling the PCB off of the heatsink. And that's the two parts finally separated. The adhesive stuff didn't come off cleanly off the back of the memory, so I'm going to remove this as well. Okay, now for the water cooling modules. I turn it around and remove these three screws to take it apart. As you can see, thermal pads are already in place. There's also a bit of padding to be used on the blank side of single-sided memory. If you have double-sided memory, you don't need this. Now simply peel the protective foil off of the thermal pad on the heatsink and place the memory module on top of it. Repeat the same for the second half of the heatsink and then screw the two parts together using the three screws again. And that's it, new heatsink installed. Now the memory modules are ready to be installed on your mainboard. In case you were wondering, 
yes, using these phobia heatsinks, you can place two memory modules directly next to each other. Since barbed fittings are used here, I recommend using hose clamps to secure the tubing. Okay, now we're all set to integrate these memory modules into a water cooling loop. As I already said in the intro, the methods shown here basically apply to installing any kind of custom heatsinks on your random access memory. 